Okay. Welcome to Simple But Hard, Keenan. It's awesome to have you on here. Nice to meet you, bro. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> okay. So like I was telling you just before this, right? Uh, Simple But Hard, 15-minute uncut podcast because the most successful people or the people that have found success in any given industry oftentimes aren't doing anything crazy complicated. They're just doing the simple fundamentals really well. And it turns out a lot of times it's just hard to do that consistently. And when I think of you, right, obviously gap selling uh, is what kind of you're known for. And the other thing that really stands out to me is your ability to diagnose problems. And you're able to do that at a much higher level than, than everyone else. And so, um, so when you think about like problem centric selling and solution centric selling, how did you, like, how did that really become apparent to you that like, Hey, I need to find the problem, not the solution. Um, watching other salespeople. So I started, so I sold my whole life. I didn't really have a style to it. I don't think, I mean, I'm sure I did, but I didn't have to give it a label. Um, but then I started consulting and I would watch salespeople sell and it just kept getting on my nerves. I'm like, why are you talking about the product or why should they buy that? And I don't understand why you're selling it. And they'd say, oh, it's going to close next week. And I'm like, well, why is it going to close next week? Well, because they said and they're it, in procurement has it and this. I'm like, okay, that's great. But why do they need it? Well, because they said they need to achieve this. And I'm like, well, but why do they need to achieve that? What happens if they don't? How do you know they can't achieve that without what you got? And the sales for, with, without what you're selling. And the sales person look at me blank in the face. And I'm like, well, I, okay, it may close, but I, I don't believe it. And so that was the first domino for me starting to, to really dig into this idea of what's the difference between all the other sales methodologies and what's not, and, and gap selling, I should say, different between gap selling and all the other sales methodologies. And look, they're, like anything else, to say that I, I created something completely entirely new that never existed, and I'm way over here in the upper right-hand corner, everybody else at the bottom left corner is just would be a, make me an asshole. You know, so there is, if you think about a uh, – uh, um, concentric circles or, or Venn diagram. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of overlap, but not very much. Um, and what I like, the way I like to leave it, because it's only 15 minutes, so I'll give it back to you. How I like to leave it is this. Almost, not almost, every other sales training is built around the concept of viewing sales as a transaction. Gap selling views sales from the change management perspective. Your job is to help a client facilitate change. And that's an entirely different process. That's really interesting. So when you think about change management, right? Like organizationally, that's a big thing. If, if you're going to move an organization, which I'm sure that's also what you do when you go in and consult um, to, to organizations, what would you say are like the key principles? Like if you miss one of these and you're trying to create change management, it's over. Yeah. I think the first one is understanding why you need to change. Like again, most sales techniques and most sales trainings, whatever you want to call it, spend so much time, even if they try to dabble in the, you know, what the pain is or something like that, they really don't flush out why you should change. They spend more time on the vision piece, right? The transaction, when you change, you'll get this. And if if you change, we'll do this. But you, I, I give you a test. Ask anybody what problems they solve. And nine out of 10, nine out of 10 times, they'll say, we help companies too. Well, that's, that's not an existing problem. That's you talking about the vision of where you'll take them. So there's really no change management involved. If you want to help someone change, you must start with why they should change. Like what's going on today in their organization that is what I say untenable or intolerable. And if you can't uncover that before you start talking about your product or service or what the outcome should be, you're not helping manage change. You're, you're making it more difficult. You're complicating it. That's why people lose to indecision and the status quo all the time because they're complicating the change process, not actually helping with it. So you that's where the gap comes in. I mean, when the gap is fully formed, it's kind of easy to decide I need to change. Right. But if you never get to that clear problem, then there is no gap. None. Interesting. None. None. So <clears throat> what... One thing that really stands out to me about uh, the like gap selling that as a method, right, is the problem identification chart. And really, like, it, I'm pretty sure what you say too is before you go talk to any customers, you need to have this this pick uh, filled out so that you know what problems to look for. Did you like? How did you come up with that? What was the thought process behind that? And why is that so important? 
So it's a great question. <laughs> I there is something to, <clears throat> there's something said about um the age old phrase that there is no such thing as eureka moments. You know, like we those of us sitting in the outside think they're oh eureka, I just you know solved the world. There's usually a lot behind this, and and the picture is probably one of those. I I'm gonna be perfectly perfectly transparent. I don't know exactly the moment that I I created the pick chart, right? Um, I, I really don't. But what I do know is that when I was writing the book and doing a lot of blogging, <clears throat> I knew that it that there was some finite set of things that your product or service addressed that you could go find. I knew that it wasn't infinite. And, and I felt that people were trying to make it infinite. Like, well, I don't know if I can help you. There's all kinds of stuff. I'm like, well, not really. There's there's a finite set of stuff that your product or service solves, right? So if it's water, you know, it's thirst, it's dehydration. It don't, you know, those are the root causes and the problems are dying or cramps, whatever, right? So there's a finite set. And if I spend enough time thinking about those, I can boil that down to four or five or six actual business problems. And once I understand what those business problems are, now it gets infinite because the impacts are going to be different for every single person on the world. But there's a like a bell curve. There's going to be a whole bunch of people that have these types of impacts. And then root causes, those can be almost infinite too. But again, from a bell curve perspective or a long tail perspective, there's a majority of root causes, 10, 15, 20, 30, doesn't really matter, that create the business problems that exist. So the idea with a pick is this. If you fill out a proper pick, let's just use ours. We're a sales training and sales consulting firm, right? There's only four problems that we solve. Missing revenue or declining revenue, long sales cycles, low average ASP and average sales price and um, low win rates. That's pretty much it, okay? And those are the only problems that sales organizations deal with. So all I have to do when I go in on a call is quickly start asking questions, you know, Hey, I know you, you're interested in sales training. What got you interested? Oh, I just don't think my sales team does enough discovery. Really? Are you finding because of that lack of discovery, your win rates are declining? No. Okay. What are your win rates? 12%. They're not declining, but they're horrible. Yeah. I asked three questions. I've already got to a problem. So tell me more about now. I just go right to the back to the root cause, poor discovery. So tell me about this discovery. Well, they only asked three or four questions. They jumped to the demo. Well, they don't really know what questions to ask. Well, they they tire the, they ask all these dumb questions and the buyer gets tired and frustrated and they just get off the call. Well, look what I just did. I found three or four things within the discovery that makes a bad discovery. We solve those discoveries and then turn around and take those discoveries. And because of that, your win rate is only 12%. Then because your win rate is only 12%, what's the impact of that? Our CAC, our cost of acquisition is through the roof. Marketing's losing their shit. They're sending us 100, 200 leads a month and we're only turning uh, a small portion of those into opportunities. And from those 100 opportunities that we get, we only turn in 12 with throwing away 88 opportunities a, a quarter. Holy shit, you even want to buy right now and you're just listening. And I did all that from the pick. The pick told me where to go, right? The pick creates the relationship between them all. <clears throat> wow. So when, it, the, and, and this is like really one of those things that sticks out to me as simple, but hard, right? If you like, like, it's truly so simple. If you have the pick, if you have the roadmap, it's, it, it's a very clear path to what questions do I need to ask in order to uncover the problem. And once I uncover the problem, then I can prescribe the solution for it. Right. Yeah. Um, why do people not use this? Is it that they don't know how to make it? Is they don't know that it exists? What, what do you think about that? So that's a fantastic question. And, and what I've learned since we've started uh, training people is it's twofold. One, and I don't I don't know why this is, so I, I can't answer that question. But one is our way of thinking for 95% of most people is in the what I can deliver. So people are constantly thinking, you know, I can make this happen. Do you want to achieve? What do you need? They keep thinking and processing in these solutions. Very few people understand and know how to diagnose. They, they're just not good at it, right? And so because you're not good at it, you, you don't practice it in your day-to-day. -day. You just constantly tell and share and convince of outcomes. You really aren't very good at assessing. The second one is... um. Salespeople are in a sales mindset. They're always trying to sell shit. And so they don't slow down to think, well, wait a minute. 
if I can actually understand what's going on, then I'd have a better understanding of the sense of urgency and why they should buy, and I'd be in a better position to sell. They just get so caught up in their own product, service, what it does, which I guess leads to the third reason is organizations, go through any sales organizations training, and I'll bet you 90% of them, if I'm generous, 85% of them, spend no time talking about the world of their buyers. There's nothing in the training that says, so your CEO is measured on these five things. Our clients, businesses, whatever, that we sell, right? They're measured on these five KPIs, okay? These five KPIs are like a reverse pick. These five KPIs are affected most by these eight things. And if these eight things are not working, they're unable to achieve these KPIs. And if they can't achieve these KPIs, this is what happens to their business. This is what happens against the competition. This is what happens with their output. I don't know what it is. And so therefore, that's why our product was created. So let's let's educate you in your business world and get you to understand all that connective tissue. Then we'll talk about our product. They don't do that. They do it the other way around. Talk about their product. Maybe say two or three things that the product fixes, right? Or better yet, does for them. And then sends them out into the real world. They don't even understand the world they're going into. <clears throat> Man, that is powerful. That is powerful. Okay, last last question. And then I want to get some places where I can send people that want to learn more about you. Um, if you had to walk through, like, let's just use low win rates for for your company, right? And you walk through the pick chart. What might that look like? All right, so the business problem is low win rates. The some of the root causes could be lack of sales training, lack of sales methodology, inability to a proper discovery, running to the demo too quickly. Um, um, see, run to the demo too quickly. Um, not understanding the customer's environment. Um, not understanding what the how the competition compares against it. Um, not understanding um, the the uh, uh, industry or, or prospects processes so it could be right could be any one of oh not getting to the right decision maker right um you having a bad product there's a root cause because i can't fix it that's still a root cause right not not good product market fit right of the company you're you're selling to so um any one of those could be the the concept for long the reason why you expose long sales cycles is that the one you do right, low win rate. Convert, low conversion any one of those could be the reason you have low conversion why because if you have low conversion, it means the, it's taking your salesperson a long time. Make, just let me phrase it. Your salesperson is in a difficulty getting the buyer to see why they should change. So if your salesperson's getting, get, it making, oh my God, if the salesperson is having a difficult time getting the buyer to see why they should change, then the buyer's not going to change. <clears throat> so therefore, if you have a hundred deals and you can't get the buyers to see why they should change, then there's, 80, 70, 90% of them won't buy. And the reasons you can now here we go, watch. Now the reason they're having a hard time seeing why they should change is you aren't able to uncover what the problem was through discovery. You are unable to take what you had in the discovery and actually translate that into some sort of ROI or some sort of um, understanding for the buyer what happens if they don't change. So all those things I listed are the reasons the buyer can't see it and therefore the buyer can't see it, they're not going to buy it. If they don't buy, that affects your, your, um, <clears throat> your, um, close rate. And I'll give you this. I literally got an email the other day. I get them all the time. Sometimes I tease people. This guy said, Hey, I guarantee you that we could help your business because we do this and we do this and we do this. And I said, great. Why do you believe that? So I wrote him back. I said, okay, why do you believe you can help my business? And he responded with, because we cut the billing time in half. We make it easier for your bill. Your, uh, what do you call those people? Your, um, um, hold on your, um, Bookkeeper, we make it easier for your bookkeepers to, to reconcile. Um, we take out, you know, tons of hours and hours of manual labor at the end of every month and every quarter, blah, blah. blah. That's how I know. And I said, I, I, you didn't answer the question. I wrote it back. I said, explain this to me again. How do you know why you can help me? And he wrote back and he threw all that stuff out again. So my point is, he had no idea if he could help me. He had no idea. He doesn't know that I don't have a bookkeeper. I mean, as we rephrase, he does. I have a bookkeeper. He doesn't know that we don't have to reconcile anything at the end of the month. We maybe, maybe she spends two hours a month reconciling things. Maybe, 
right? So he doesn't know, but yet he's making the claim that he can save me and he has no idea. Mm -hmm. That's what salespeople do every day. They don't take two seconds to understand who they're talking to and try to understand, can they actually help someone? They just keep saying, I know we can because our product exists, mm -hmm. right? That's so good. Keenan, thank you so much. Where can people find out about you? Not hard. You put Keenan in Google, you put sales growth company, a sales growth company in, in Google, you put, you go to LinkedIn. I mean, a sales growth company in, in Keenan, and if you can't find me, then I don't know that I can help you. <clears throat> like you got bigger problems than I can help with. <laughs> I love it. I love, well, hey, thank you for coming on. That was one of the best uh, descriptions that I've found of like how important it is to actually identify the problem. And another thing from your book that I love is once you have the problem, it makes prospecting and content creation so much easier. Yeah. Because then you can just talk about the problems and people yeah. then you because they feel understood. Exactly. All day. All day, man. Awesome.